Hi, everybody. I'm sorry I missed your introduction. But, uh, I, lo I love this movie. I think it's very funny. I hope the audience is joining us. I have one question I want to ask Brent to uh, get the thing started, and then we'll turn it over to the floor. But what is the difference between writing and performing television and feature film? Um, well, for me, the big difference was once the script was done, then my job was over with the, with the movie in terms of writing. Whenever, whenever I'm doing a series, you know, I'm always writing one episode, acting in another, and editing another, kind of all at the same time. And so there's never any downtime. And that was the main thing that I noticed with, with this was I wasn't used to, if we were doing a camera turnaround, you know, my instinct is, okay, where am I supposed to be now? And the realization came, oh, I'm supposed to sit down and go on Twitter. So it was, uh, so I, I enjoyed this experience very, very much. And it's, uh, you know, it's otherwise it's very similar. It's very collaborative. It's a very team effort. You know, you, you put something together alone in your basement one night in terms of a script, but then, you, you, you kind of hand it over to a team of incredible professionals and to that degree it's the same but for me it was just about you know the, the pace of it I got to I got to write then I got to act then I got to edit they were months apart questions don't be shy everybody here yes <laughs> Oh, I, I'll get here before you will. <laughs> Great job. Um, have you guys thought of doing uh, any, um, like, a TV series or expanding it? Uh, it's kind of got a bit of Columbo style going on there, and uh, I think it might, might be good for Vancouver, and I'm sure you might have a story. Um, no, I mean, we haven't thought of doing this as a... <laughs> I don't know how big you think the room is, but... Uh... <laughs> And you can hear me in the balcony up there. Uh, not really. We haven't thought about doing this as a TV uh, series or anything. You're, you're right. It's got the feel uh, of that kind of thing. And, and um, I mean, the dynamic between uh, kind of a not-so-good detective and a very skilled thief lends itself, I think, to, you know, I don't know if anybody wants to finance a series. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm being teased about ready to wrap, but last night at the uh, premiere of Cass and Dylan, I came out to make some remarks after Shauna, who's kind of short, and nobody could hear what I was saying because I hadn't adjusted the mic, so that's why I'm running around and insisting on the mic. Can I just say, yes, Carlos. I want to just thank and introduce a couple people. There's Sean Tozer here who did the score, which is just, I think, amazing. Just fun. Yeah. And, uh, sitting right here Production designer Tony Denini. Do you give us a wave? There he is. Mark Shear, are you here? There he is. Mark. 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 Right Over here, Paul. All right. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. Very funny. Uh, good job, everyone. Um, Carl, can you talk about the shift to comedy for you and how that felt as a director? I don't associate you with comedy. I, I, I like to laugh, and I'm not. I don't think my films have been very funny. But I mean, it's really <laughs> great to work on a funny movie and to work with funny people. So. I mean, I don't know, when I sit down at night to watch something, it's always such a treat to find something good and funny to watch. TV shows, movies, and so I've been working with Brent a little bit on his TV stuff, and we became friends, and when the chance came to do a movie like this, which for me, like, this is like my blockbuster. This is like a huge film for me, so the chance to work with a big team. I had a really amazing DP, Jan Kieser. I don't think Jan made it up, but I mean, you know, he, he works at a level, at a scale that's really exciting, and so... I got to hire a real designer, Tony, and then I forced him to do like low budget stuff after. <laughs> but you know, that's the appeal. It's really great to just step in. And in a way, I mean, I was just directing. It was fantastic. That was my only job, which was lovely. I don't need the mic. Um, I thought it was really fantastic, really fun, and uh, it really captured a noir feel, the modern, you know, in color and modern feel. And, uh, 
It's also your old stomping ground, all the Patricia Hotel and all that. So how did you, um, how did you two work together to create how you, how noir you wanted it to be? Did you all hear? Did Mackenzie project? <laughs> well, we, you can talk a bit about the process, just you know, watching films and talking, and you know, we sat down. Or, you know, early days when when uh, I hired Carl to do this, we just started talking about what the film should look like. And Carl, as you know, is uh, in every sense of the word a filmmaker, which was important. That you know, it was important to us to to hire somebody who knew how to take the words off the page and make them into a legitimate cinematic movie and not just a you know kind of a longer TV show. We we needed that. And so we sat down and talked about how to to do that and we looked at different films of reference. I mean to me the two main elements that I think give the film that noir feel, I mean it's the style of the shooting for sure. Lots of this sort of high angle stuff and I think cap it cap it with the surveillance Kind of overheads. I love doing that. And then I, I just thought the music was so of that era. I mean, I just can't say enough about what Sean did. I mean, for me, again, why I'm so excited about the music, we, we had uh, the Vancouver Symphony Film Orchestra. We were in a great studio. We spent, and they're here, some of the folks. Hal, and yeah, I mean, thank you. I mean, you can't know what a thrill it is as a filmmaker to sit there now it's out of your hands Sean's conducting a conductor who's conducting uh, musicians it's live I mean it was really a thrill and you just hear it I think you know just every moment in the film is kind of being composed it's it's oh what a treat so and that's how they made the old movies right you know can I can I just ask you a little bit about the, the financing process I mean obviously you had no told... questions <laughs> Well, I, I see you have telefilm and My lawyer's right here. <laughs> I, I, I mean, this is all about promoting new people and, and independent and everything. Obviously, you have a reputation that preceded you, but I, did you have to piecemeal this uh, production or...? Yeah, Laura can talk. Laura's Business Affairs for Sparrow Media, and mm -hmm. she can talk a bit about how that came together. Uh, every film is, is piecemeal yeah. in Canada and yes. I'm sure everywhere. Um, but we had amazing support uh, from the day the script was written by telephone, you know, from telephone and um, from Alliance Films, our distributor, who is now E1, so now E1 is our distributor. Sure. Um, but a lot of the same people who are at Alliance are still at E1, so it's, that's great. And they're uh, releasing the film March 7th, uh, so you guys will start to see a lot of promo on March 7th. Um, but yeah, it, it was, um, you know, you always have to pull the pieces together, and of course we had our star, which for features is, is, the, is the next piece after the script, and, and then we did a big, fairly long search for our for our Kyra, and and very luckily landed on Amy. So, and then David Keckner joined shortly after that. Okay. So that that's that's really what kind of closes everything. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Telefilm last week uh, released a study. They probably spent a fortune on um, what audiences are looking for, and the result was comedy. So. Uh, Excellent. Yeah, <laughs> so you know, ho hopefully this just kind of fits in with the uh, direction that they're going to be investing some of their money in the sorts of movies that people want to pay for and go to see in theaters. So I just thought I'd throw that in. Excellent. How many writers were there on in the dialogue? How's that all good? You did yourself, or yeah, I just uh, I wrote the movie myself, and all, you know, for me. The dialogue is the fun part. The hard part is making it all make sense, make a beginning and middle and an end, and make it all hold water. And so I, I wrote it myself. I hired a buddy of mine named Joel Walmsley, who uh, he's a stand-up comic that I've known for many, many years. And he just happens to be a guy who uh, he knows all the grifts, he knows the scams. He's one of these guys that's been fascinated by magic and illusions and con men and deception. And so my big fear as a writer was that I would write this mystery, this murder mystery, and then we would shoot it all, and somebody would go, but all he had to do was make one phone call, and the whole thing would be like, oh! <laughs> 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 um, Okay, no mugs! <laughs> so, uh, so I hired Joel to, to read the script, of the, you know, and make sure that it held water, and, and he said it uh, did, he couldn't see any holes with it. But but the rest of it was just you know for me that's the fun part is writing the dialogue and kind of writing characters. We have time. 
for two more questions. And from start to finish, how long does it take to make your movie? That we well, it, I guess it depends how you define it. I, I think I started writing the script about five years ago. Yeah. Um, and then we came close to financing a couple times, and if a couple pieces of the, of the puzzle aren't there, you may as well have zero percent. So, it, it, from when I first sat down to start writing to us standing here was about five years, I think. But the actual film we shot for a month, right? Twenty days, twenty-one days, twenty some days. Yeah. Final question. I've got a question. Uh, first of all, very enjoyable. I thought it was great. Thank you. Uh, my question is more in regards to the content. You know, being a Canadian production in, a, in, a, in Canada, shot in Vancouver, a Canadian crew, we know the standard was quite prominent as it is in, some, in your front of gas series. Is there ever a point where you decide to take that out of the picture? Because if you're going to try and commercialize this down in the States, how does Canada play in having that prominent role? Or would that be edited out for the <laughs> Good question. Um, I hope that it's not edited out. And our our notion from the get go, I mean, it's all it's all about balance. It's all about not, you know, cramming Canadiana down anybody's face, but just having it happen to take place in Canada. I mean, if you go back to Corner Gas, one of the things, aside from you know the very first scene of Corner Gas where they talked about being in Saskatchewan, the vast majority of it, I always said I, I wanted it to not be about that. I wanted. It to be it happened to take place in Saskatchewan, and it kind of stands out because you don't see that. And I think for us, when we're watching a movie like this, we rarely get to see Canada play Canada in a feature film. We don't get to see it enough. And when we see those moments, when we see Canadian money or if we see a Canadian flag on a boat, they I think they jump out at us as Canadians more than they do to the rest of the world. I think the, most of the rest of the world are. You know, are hardly going to notice that kind of stuff, and it, you know, I, I feel like it kind of it's a bigger deal to us because we've spent however old we are since 1867 saying, "Look at us! Look at us! Everybody! Look at us!" <laughs> and the U.S. and the U.K. were like, hey, "All right, sure, kid, ruffling our hair." <laughs> and I kind of feel that Canada is now at the stage of like a 15-year-old who's isn't really that interested in hanging out with mom and dad anymore. And we're kind of like, yeah, we're going to go do our own thing. And we're going to stand on our own. And we're going to make our own decisions. And I kind of feel like that's one of the reasons Corner Gas worked, I think, was timing. I think that we as a country were just in a place where you know, we're okay seeing our own stuff. And, and I, I think, you know, we have, a, we have a distributor outside of Canada, Myriad Pictures. They haven't voiced any concern in this regard. To us, that you know, initially they were hoping that it wouldn't, you know, everybody be in, in mounty hats and everything would be holding <laughs> hockey sticks and stuff. But once we assured them that that wasn't going to be the case, we were just going to make a movie, a murder mystery. Then they were they were on board. So I think it's a bigger deal to us than the rest of the world. Um, I want to say that the Whistler Film Festival has been trying to get a Carl Pissai film up here for years. I'm really honored that uh, this was our first, and I hope it's the first of many. Yeah. Yeah. So. Thank you all for coming, and enjoy the rest of the festival, and thank you for everybody here.